What's up, you guys? Today's been crazy. My computer is acting up. <laughs> Popsicle. My computer was acting up. It took me forever to edit the vlog. Anyway, it's kind of the end of the day, but I just wanted to tackle one of the things that I get so many questions about. Let's do it. But first, popsicles. Cheers. Have the same thing. <laughs> it doesn't. You can still cheers even if you don't have the same thing. But you and I do, huh? Cheers. Yeah. Dink it. And, and sink it. Wow, that's some fine work there, buddy. Wow, wow. Good. Did you guys see the new addition to the shop? This is my great grandfather's saddle. It's real rough, but it looks so good. Who's gonna explain about the sewing machine issues? I nominate Indy. Indy, pop quiz. What's the top three things you can do to reduce track marks on a sewing machine on the leather? No, no answers? You failed. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You guys are perfect. You never do anything wrong. I love you both. Oh yeah, bud. Get it up. All right, you guys, I'm gonna talk about something that I've been asked about more than anything ever in my history of being a leather craftsman on YouTube, and that is how do you prevent your sewing machine from leaving deep track marks in your leather? Before we get into this, I need to put in a little disclaimer here. There will always be a little evidence of the machine in the leather. There's nothing you can do to completely get rid of that. And I know that's not what you wanna hear, but it's just the reality of it. But I've got like four tips that should help preventing this as much as possible. And uh, I've been trying to dial this in for years. I feel like we've got it down to a pretty good science, but you'll never completely get rid of it. But now that we all understand that, let me show you my tips for uh, preventing it as much as possible. All right, the first one is probably the most obvious. I'm sure this is the first thing most of you tried, but this right here is your presser foot tension screw. So the more you back that off and raise it up, the less pressure your presser foot's gonna be putting on the leather. There's usually a little locking nut down here. So if you loosen that up, Back that up as much as you can, like to the last couple threads and then lock it in. That should be the very first thing you do. So the second thing I would recommend is getting a smooth bottom presser foot. I got mine from Dane's Sewing in Murray, Utah, and that's where I bought this machine from. So he just put it on for me before I even picked it up. I'm sure you wouldn't have a problem finding that online. All right, tip number three is all about using the right leather. We started using harness leather from Wicked and Craig before I even had a sewing machine. And unfortunately, harness leather from Wicked and Craig has turned out to be one of the most impressionable hides I've tried putting through this machine. It seems to mark up more than any other leather that I've used. I'm really hesitant to just completely get rid of it because we have so much content out there, so many good reviews for our russet harness. It would be really hard for us just to kind of pull the plug and get rid of it altogether. But if I had my way right now, I would probably get rid of harness leather altogether on our site and just stick to using like skirting or something that's a little bit firmer tempered and uh, not so impressionable. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Okay, just as an example, this is Wicked and Craig's Russet Harness. The area that you're gonna see our track marks the most is gonna be right along here. Unfortunately, that's just something you're gonna get with this leather. There's not much you can do about that. But if you look at it on our skirting leather, so this is our black skirting. And you'll notice it's still there, but it's a lot less noticeable. It's much more shallow and it's hardly visible at all on, uh, on other areas of the wallet. So skirting seems to handle the machine a little better. And I think it's because it doesn't have quite as much uh, wax and oil and tallow um, that makes it a little bit softer and more impressionable. And then here's our oil tan leather. There is almost zero evidence of the sewing machine in that same spot. So you're just gonna have to experiment with lots of different types of leather and see what works best for you and what doesn't. Okay, and then my fourth and final tip. So one of the things that I think has helped the very most, made the biggest difference, was running all of the interior pocket pieces through a splitter. We usually buy our leather at about three to four ounces, and then we split the interior pieces down to about two ounces. And that way your presser foot has less to uh, push into and kind of push up against, which is usually what causes those big tracks. So if you can split it down, then you're gonna minimize that a whole lot more. That's made a huge difference for us. I don't personally have a splitter, but we had a uh, Russ from Waterbury start doing that and it turned out so nice. So if you don't have a splitter, then the one thing I would recommend is take your pocket pieces like this and just skive that bottom edge. From what I found on our wallets, that's the spot that would create the biggest track marks um, in the bottom of the wallet. Let me show you what I do. That's really dangerous to do one-handed. <laughs> I do not recommend that. Um, so there we go. Just give it about a half inch in and take it down. Um, I don't know what the thickness is at now. I don't have a gauge handy, but I just split that down to be much thinner. And that way, as you're running the sewing machine across this part right here, it's gonna be much cleaner. So you might not be making a wallet, but find the areas on your project that you can reduce the bulk as much as possible. And it's gonna make your machine stitch just a lot cleaner. Okay guys, I think that's it. Those are like the main things that have helped us out. But one thing I wanna mention about this is don't stress about those little marks too much. There are so many high quality luxury pieces of leather work out there in the world, almost 
all of that high-end stuff was done on a machine. Upholstery, most of the time when you find a really high quality pair of boots or shoes, the uppers are gonna be completely done on a machine. And if you look close, you'll notice the evidence of a sewing machine. It's just, it's just how it is and it's, it's not a horrible thing. If we're being completely honest, there's kind of an appeal of it to me. Some of you know my background. What really got me into leather work was uh, Western Tack and Saddlery. The thing that drew me into those products was was uh, looking at it closely and, and holding it in my hands and you could see a lot of the imperfections. But what it does is kind of create this visual of the maker who's making it. It humanizes the product. You go, oh, this didn't just get popped out of some plastic mold. This was made by somebody. It, you know, you can almost visualize the person sitting down at the sewing machine and putting this together. And so it's okay if it's not perfect. Everyone's gonna have their own standards for their own products and that's great, that, you know, that's totally fine. But for us, I wanted our products to feel like a piece of Western tack. So it's very appropriate. You know, the machine didn't throw me off at all. I really love the look of the stitch. They're really high quality. We haven't had any issues with our uh, machine stitching. It may not be for everybody, but it was a great way to go for us. And it's really helped us scale our business and, and kind of refine what we do. So, okay, there it is, guys. This is a very different style of vlog than we've been doing, but uh, that's it. That's what you get today. I'm gonna head in and watch a movie and eat some popcorn with my family. Thanks for watching, you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. This contest is- Hey. What is going on in here? <laughs> did you guys save me some popcorn? Oh my goodness. You spilled a little bit. Cindy, did you do spilled that? Spilled a little bit of the popcorn. We're watching a movie. Can I watch and eat popcorn with you? Yeah. Okay.